What is up everybody? It is Life's Apprentice. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to properly measure a roof for a shingle install. We're actually in a mobile home park or prefab home park here and we're going to be measuring this roof here. So the first thing I always look for is how many layers there are. Usually by the ladder you can peel up underneath and uh, figure out generally with some certainty how many layers there's going to be. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look around for missing shingles, um, possible rotten plywood, um, things done improperly like this right here. Um, it doesn't appear that this flashing goes up underneath the shingles. They have it tarred and it looks like it's probably not leaking at the moment. But this is a potential leak spot. Um, I'm going to check all these boots. You can see this is dry rotting. Obviously these get replaced every single time. Um, and then these are like pod vents which would get replaced um, for the attic ventilation. Now um, on mobile homes skylights are a little bit different but uh, you know look at skylights you can measure them and figure out uh, what size you would need um, or flashing kits. Most skylights you can reuse these particular kind you cannot. Um, I guess you probably could but you can see how yellow they are um, these will definitely need to be replaced and uh, Then we're gonna go through and get some measurements. You can see how the roof lays out here um, It's generally just a ranch just a standard ranch, but we do have this little dormer on the front and That's really the only thing on here that is makes it not a ranch I guess um, So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our rectangle And this is not perfect, this is freehand, this is how I measure roofs on a daily basis. We can see that the ridge and the ridge meet. So we're gonna come over here. This is not perfectly center, obviously. You have like 15, 18 feet here and probably 30 feet over there. So it is offset a little bit. So we're gonna run our ridge straight across the middle like that. And we're gonna run this Oh, we'll run it right about there. This is not super crucial, assuming that your measurements are proper. And we're going to do that. Um, we know that this is the ridge. We know that these are valleys. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this measurement here and this measurement here. Fourteen, eleven. We'll call it fifteen. And we're gonna measure all the way across the ridge. This thing's really handy for measuring roofs, but I don't know if you're a homeowner or you don't measure a whole lot of roofs. This is probably unnecessary, but I really, really like it. So we have sixty-three feet. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get this length from here to here and this length from here to here. Um, that's going to be important when you try to figure out the square foot of these triangles here. So we know that's 22 and a half. And based on this 63 measurement, we can assume that this is going to be 40 and a half. Well, we're not assuming. We know that this is going to be 40 and a half. Because 40 and a half plus 22 and a half equals 63. So we know that measurement now. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get this measurement here and this measurement here. And you can see that's 12 and a half to there. I'm generally rounding these numbers up. Um, and that's just something that I do. You don't have to do that. So we know that that is 12 and a half right there. And I'm in a tree, but. 30 and a half and I did measure this this is 15 as well 
same as the other side. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to get the length of this ridge and then we need to get the length of this rake edge here and the length of the valley. The valley is not super important when it comes to measuring. I'll show you that in here in a minute, but um, I always take a valley measurement. We're at 13.10 there, so that's 14. And then here, we have 10. Fourteen, ten, and seventeen. And I'm going to go back home. I'm going to put this on a whiteboard, and I'm going to explain um, exactly how to figure out the square footage and what kind of materials you need. But when you're up here, you're going to want to be looking like I'm counting one, two, three, um, four pod vents. These are two-inch boots. We need one, two, three, four of those. Um, and then these skylights are something that I will have to get from a mobile home manufacturer. These are not something you're going to be able to just get at a box store, I don't believe. Um, depending on where you live, I guess. I've never seen them. Um, the mobile homes that I've replaced these on, I have to get from um, basically the mobile home manufacturers. All right, here is the first roof that we looked at. Um, and this is drawn a lot better and more to scale on the whiteboard here. Um, I've transferred all of the measurements over. All of the original measurements are in black here. And I'm going to go over basically how you figure out the square footage and how you're going to get all this figured out. So we know that this back side was 63 feet by 15 feet. So in order to figure out the square footage, we're going to take 63 and we're going to multiply it by 15. That is going to give us 945 square feet feet. Now on this side it gets a little bit more complicated just because you have the um, the triangles in here. So what I've done is I've drawn these red lines here to just mark off the straight portion of this roof. So we know that it was 15 feet by 30 and a half. I'm going to multiply 15 times 30 and a half. We have 457.5 square feet and I did the exact same thing over here. Um, I did 12 and a half by 15. Multiply that, you're going to have 187.5. Now here, we, I, I've just drawn some lines here um, to figure out these triangles, the square foot of these triangles. Now we have 22 and a half feet from here to here. We're going to subtract 12 and a half feet from that which is going to give us 10 feet here and we have 30 and a half feet here. Um, we're going to subtract that from 40 and a half. We also have 10 here. So in order to figure out the square footage of a triangle, you're going to take like this length right here is 15 feet. We know that because um, that is the length here. So we're going to take 15 and multiply it by 10 and then divide it by 2. So 10 times 15 is 150, and we're going to divide that by 2. And this is essentially how that works out, is right here. Um, this is 10 by 14, which is these other triangles. But basically, when you figure it out, you're going to have 10 by 14, and then these triangles will make a square or a rectangle. So you're going to divide that by 2. So this is 75, this is 75. And here we know we have 10 feet here, 14 feet here. We're going to multiply those, divide that by 2. Um, since we have 2, we know that each one is 70. 10 times 14 is 140. Divide that by 2, and we get 70. Now, the entire total is right over here, 1,880 square feet. So that is uh, pretty much an exact measurement you are going to have some waste you are going to have some um, extra shingles that are going to run up underneath the valley assuming you're doing a closed valley um, so you will have some waste here so if i was measuring this um, which i am to bid this roof 
I'm not going to bid it at 1,880 square feet. I'm going to add to that, and I'm going to figure about 20 square. And that's going to allow for um, some waste. If you have a little bit of uh, maybe damaged shingles that come um, off the pallet, that'll give you a, um, a good, good estimate where you're not going to be short. You'll probably at 20 square have two or three bundles left over. Now, the other things you want to consider, like I talked about, on this roof there was four two-inch pipe boots. Um, we had the two skylights over here. I believe we had four pod vents. Um, if you're doing new edge, you would figure out your gutter apron. You'd have 63 feet plus 30 and a half plus 12 and a half. That would be your gutter apron. As far as D edge, you're going to need 15, 15, 15, 15, 10, and 10. That's how much gutter apron you will need. And then to figure starter shingles, you're going to just, you know, figure out the length of the perimeter. If you're doing rake and um, eave starter shingles, you would just go around the entire perimeter. To figure out your ridge, you know, you're going to need 63 feet plus 14 feet. Um, and you're going to want to round up a little bit on those numbers so that you're not short. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, depending on the area and code requirements, you'll want to figure out what, how much ice and water shield you're going to need, how much tar paper you're going to need. I find a 20 square roof, um, one box of nails and one box of staples is sufficient. If you're going to be putting in valley metal you 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 know that you have 17 feet plus 17 feet so you would probably want to just get a 50 foot roll of that uh, and that is basically it that is how you measure a roof well that is it for this video um, that's a pretty simple roof that gives you guys a, a, a really good idea of how to measure a roof properly um, there are software systems out there and a lot of building companies and stuff if you bring them in a drawing they will um, do the estimation for you. But if you want to do it yourself, this is essentially how you do it. I am a professional. This is what I do for a living. So um, you can trust what I'm telling you. Hit, hit the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will see you on the next one.